All right, welcome back to um, Chapter 6, Lesson 6. We're going to talk about trapezoids and kites today. Um, and I just wanted to remind you that these two are not considered um, to be in that parallelogram family. So, um, But they are kind of like the aunt and uncle of... Um, parallelograms, but they are still in the quadrilateral family tree, just not a parallelogram. So um, let's get started with our lesson. We're going to go over some vocabulary real quick. Um, and first we're going to start out with a trapezoid. So some of the characteristics of that trapezoid. Um, the definition of a trapezoid, it's a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. And those parallel sides are actually going to be considered the bases. So over here in the picture, we have trapezoid T-R-A-P. And if T-R is parallel to A-P, I know that those two, T-R and A-P, are considered my bases of this trapezoid. All right, the other two sides of this trapezoid are called the legs. They are going to be the non-parallel sides, so TP and RA. Since they are not parallel, those are going to be called our legs. So those two are really what sets us apart um, from that parallelogram family. And then the last thing that a trapezoid has is a pair or two pairs of base angles. So um, a pair, which is two, of angles that are on the same base. So angle T and angle R are actually going to be considered um, base angles because they are on the same base. And then you could also say that angle P and angle A would be considered base angles, again, because they are on the same base. And because of these parallel sides, all of those angles, those corresponding consecutive, all of those actually apply to um, this trapezoid. So you actually can also say that the measure of angle T plus the measure of angle P equals 180 degrees because they are all or they are um, consecutive interior angles. And same goes for the other side. The measure of angle R plus the measure of angle A also equals 180. Consecutive interior angles equals 180 degrees. All right, we have one special trapezoid that is called an isosceles trapezoid. Um, this is a trapezoid that um, in which the legs are congruent. So the first thing is we have a trapezoid. We have one pair of parallel sides. And the legs are congruent, which would tell me that AD is congruent to BC. Both sets of um, base angles are congruent. So D is congruent to C. Angle D is congruent to angle C because remember those base angles lie on the same base. Um, angle A is congruent to angle B. And the big thing is that the diagonals are also congruent. So DB, remember diagonals connect the non-consecutive vertices is congruent to a c so that would be considered one of those special trapezoids um the mid segment of a trapezoid which we'll get into later is a segment that connects the midpoints of the legs of the trapezoid so we still have those two parallel sides and then we'll um, look at the midpoints and how that mid segment, middle mid segment, can help us solve some problems. And then the last quadrilateral we will learn for the section and for the chapter is called a kite. So the kite is a quadrilateral with exactly two distinct pairs of adjacent. Remember, that means next to congruent sides. So notice that. My adjacent sides are going to be congruent. 
Alrighty, let's get into some of our theorems. Um, the first one we want to talk about is isosceles trapezoids. So if a tra trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of base angles is congruent. So we learned that one before. So we can put our base angles lying on the same base are congruent. Just as a reminder, I know the bases are the ones that have the arrows or the parallel sides. So base GH, the base angles there are angle G and angle H. So those are congruent. And then I have the other base as FJ. So now I know that angle F is congruent to angle J, but I have to be really particular and know which bases I am looking at. All right, how do we prove it's an isosceles trapezoid? Well, the first way is if a trapezoid, so we have to be a trapezoid, has one pair of congruent base angles, then it is isosceles. So to prove it, we need to be a trapezoid. And one pair of congruent base angles. Then it's isosceles. So we only, if we have our um, triangles for our bases and we have L is congruent to M, then we can say automatically that it's isosceles. All right, and the second way if it's isosceles is um, if a trapezoid is isosceles if and only if its diagonals are congruent. So if the diagonals are congruent, then I know it is um, an isosceles trapezoid. All right, let's move on to see how we can use this information to solve some problems. So we have a basket over here. Maybe we're going to carry our... Um, some goodies in our basket. Each side of the basket um, shown is an isosceles trapezoid. So I know it's isosceles and I know it's a trapezoid. So I have two parallel sides and two congruent sides. Um, if JML, so JML, I have an angle right here, is 130 degrees. I am asked to find MJK. Let's see, MJK. So I am asked to find this angle right here. Well, what do I know? Well, I first know it's an isosceles trapezoid. So I know that I have parallel bases and um, two congruent sides. But I also know that consecutive interior angles equal 180 degrees because it's uh, parallel lines. They make that transversal. So I know that the measure of angle JML, which is 130, they, were, they gave that to us, plus the measure of angle MJK, the one we're trying to find, equals 180 degrees. They are supplementary. So we can solve this problem by setting up that equation that they're supplementary. So I can subtract 130 degrees and I get the measure of angle MJK to equal 50 degrees. And because it's an isosceles trapezoid, I also know that J is also equal to K, so K would also be 50 degrees. And then angle L is the same as angle M, 130 degrees. All right, so that's how you kind of use the angles in an isosceles trapezoid. How do we use the sides in an isosceles trapezoid? So um, we know that JML is 130. So again, this is 130 degrees. Might not be helpful, but we'll see. Um, KN is 6.7 feet. And I also know JL, so JL, which is that whole diagonal, is 10.3. Well, what do I know? I know that the diagonals 
of an isosceles trapezoid. I forgot to put my parallel sides and my congruent legs. So the diagonals are congruent. So I know that JL equals KM. And I'm asked to find MN. So I'm asked to find what is that part? Well, I know that JL equals JN plus NL. And since I know JL equals KM, I also know that equals KM. So, I know that KM equals 10.3. And then since the diagonals are congruent, I know that JN equals KN, so that's 6.7, plus MN, so I can subtract 6.7 from both sides. So I know that MN equals 3.6 feet. Again, knowing those diagonals are congruent is very, very helpful. All right, go ahead and stop this video and do your check your progress. All right, here are the answers to your check your progress. All right, we're going to move on to example number two. Um, using coordinate geometry to prove if it's an isosceles trapezoid. So we have a quadrilateral with the vertices and we are asked to show that ABCD is a trapezoid. And then we need to determine, is it isosceles? All right, so a quadrilateral is a trapezoid if we have exactly one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. Well, remember, to find parallel, we need to use the slope formula. to find that. And if you look at our picture, to find your bases, we know that CB is a positive slope and we know that DA is a negative slope. So they cannot be considered our bases. So we need to look at, is CD parallel to BA? So I want you to stop this video. I want you to do the slope formula for CD and the slope formula for BA. Right after you do your slope formula, you get CD slope is one fourth, and you also get BA slope is one fourth, which have the same slopes. So that means they are parallel. All right, so that should tell you something. If I have exactly one pair of parallel sides, then ABCD is a trapezoid because exactly one pair of parallel sides, CD, is parallel to BA. Now, we are asked to determine if it is an isosceles trapezoid, which means we need to use the distance formula to see if those legs are congruent. So remember, those legs that we just talked about, the ones that are not parallel, um, C, B, and D, A, we need to see if they are congruent. So go ahead and do the distance formula for the two legs and see if they are congruent. All right, after you do the distance formula for both of your legs, notice one is the square root of 18, one is the square root of 17. So we know that those legs are not congruent. Well, if we have one pair of parallel sides, but our legs are not congruent, then we cannot say that um, it is an isosceles trapezoid because our legs are not congruent. This completes part one of section 6-6. I will see you back at section. Uh, at part two.